Well, hello there, and welcome into a brand new season of Three Dog Thursday. I am merely the somewhat competent host, TJ Reeves, and I have a new tag team partner that's actually been a tag team partner uh, for a while, but now he's full fledged. We're like going for the world tag team titles. <laughs> Gary Seegers of Winning Cures Everything, the podcast, the show, and Bet US TV's college football coverage is here with me on Three Dog Thursday. I would rather have no one better than to have Gary Seegers uh, hang here with me and talk college football and talk underdogs in particular on Thursdays. My friend, how are you? I am feeling fantastic. I'm excited about the fact that this is going to be on the Winning Cures Everything channel this year. Uh, I'm excited about talking college football, of course. I, there's a lot going on in my world, and the <laughs> fact that uh, that I get to do this as well. Uh, this is going to be a good time. I'm really and, excited and about it. One, okay, so you have uh, amazing things while we just pulled the curtain back on our personal lives for 22.9 seconds. You have amazing things going on because you have daughter starting college and way away from home, and you're about to be a dad again like any time. Like Gary keeps checking his text message and his watch <laughs> that his wife could be in labor. While we talk underdogs in college football, you got a lot going on personally right oh, now yes. so I'm, I'm here in your corner for you i just let you know oh and, and don't forget about the middle child right the, uh, <laughs> the little boy is uh he just started kindergarten less than a month oh, ago my god so he is learning what homework is for the first time oh. he's not a not a big fan of that and then but, you already yeah. did this uh, and, and full disclosure with me people that know me that follow me, me and by the way you're following gary whether you're seeing us on winning cures which is gary's platform you know all about him you see all of his stuff if you're only hearing us in podcast form through the Three Dog Thursday podcast form. You can follow him at Gary WCE for Winning Cures Everything or at Winning Cures. Go to winningcures.com. So you know about Gary. And if you know anything about me, I've got identical 15-year-old girls, which the circus is in town every day, Brother Seegers, and they are somewhat of football fans. Now, they don't care about the point spreads like we do that we're about to get into in a second, but they care about this stuff. They care about the high school game that's coming up at the, as the time that we're releasing this on Friday night, but not for the reasons that we care about the competition and the score. They want to go socialize with their friends and eat some Kona ice at the game. That's, these are the priorities in my house. That, Seegers, and driving lessons. And you remember that with your oh, daughter, yes. and it'll be coming later with your sons. Welcome to our worlds, to the audience on Three Dog Thursday as we share it's, a little bit about ourselves. We don't get to do nothing but football right when you got families uh <laughs> those tend to take priority most of the time uh there are some bigger games that my wife understands that hey i can't bother him during this. <laughs> i got a text yesterday morning that said uh hey we don't have any plans on september 23rd right and i looked through and i said uh yeah kind of we've got bama Ole miss oh, we've got penn oh, state iowa yes. ohio state notre dame florida state clemson <laughs> I said, yeah there's a few things going on that day for me uh, but presumably we'll, we'll figure out whatever. is is mama seeger's gonna make it to september 23rd before baby oh, because no. babies like do no. any time here yes. so other than the fact that we have all those college games you're also going to be burping the baby feeding the baby changing the baby <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, all this is going on in the college. It's going to be mayhem. Season. I'm excited. Uh, it's chaos. I, it is. I and it's chaos. chaos. It's, it's chaos that we love and enjoy. Okay. Uh, so what we do here is we try to come up between Gary and me with three underdogs each in college football simply against the number. They don't have to win. Usually it's the lesser thought of team. Usually it's the road team. They don't have to win. They simply have to cover. So we're going to go over that. But this is week zero. Not not week zero as in it means nothing. It just means this is kind of the appetizer. This is the French onion soup. This is, what do we have, like seven games, seven, eight games before we have an onslaught of like 60 games next week and next weekend. So this is a tease, isn't it, Gary, of just yes. a few games week zero? So seven FBS games. There are a few FCS games uh, that you'll be able to toss on, especially that morning and whatnot, to get you – you know, it primed up before Notre Dame starts at two thirty Eastern, but uh, but yeah, only only seven games, and basically the majority of them are at night. It's uh, it's a little weird how they did the schedule, but uh, but hey, our prime time game this year or this year this week is UMass at New Mexico State, <laughs> which is just very interesting. It, it also <laughs> does not. 
it does not bode well on the national landscape, college football playoff in- implications, New Year's Six bowl games. I don't think that this one will uh, will probably register. But hey, we have football. We have college football back, and it's great to have college football back. All right, so let's roll the sleeves up. Let's get into it on Three Dog Thursday. WinningCuresEverything.com and the Winning Cures uh, platform of shows. So glad to have Gary with me. Let's start with Navy Notre Dame. And no, not in the North American continent, but on the European continent in Dublin, Ohio. I did not realize this till I did a little prep, and there actually is prep. This is the third time they've played in Ireland, Navy and Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame has won decisively the previous two times. I believe the last time they played was over a decade ago, like 2011, 2012. Yes. So it's not it's not the only time they've ever done this. Notre Dame has been there before uh, playing in Ireland. They are a massive favorite. New coaching staff for Navy. Gary Seegers, a thought on Navy as a 20 or a 20 and a half point underdog, wherever you're seeing that number, it's probably around 20, 20 and a half, something like that. A thought on Navy for Three Dog Thursday purposes, please. There, there is a 21 out there. If you're in Vegas, you can go over to South Point and get that 21. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested in this because Navy has just come out of the gates with a thud the last three years, right? We talked about this on the Bet US show yesterday. Uh, they, they lost to BYU 55 to three in that 2020 season to open the season. They lost to Marshall 49 to seven in 2021, <laughs> and then last year they didn't get blown out. But they got beat at home by Delaware, 14-7. to seven. Yes, they so, did. So not ideal starts. Now they've got the new coach, Brian Newberry. Uh, they've got a new offensive coordinator going to throw in some wrinkles here and there. But for the most part, they are, they're planning on still running the triple, which is interesting because the rules have changed, right? You, you can't do the cut blocks. You can't. That's uh, right. It, yeah, it, it's going to be weird to see how they do this. Uh, however, this is a team that has been just fantastic against the spread. They are 6-1 and one against the number as a dog of 18 points or more in their last seven attempts. And this dates all the way back to 2017, I believe. Uh, but they're 4-2 and two against the spread against Notre Dame in the last six. So, you know, it seems like a, a lot of points, especially week one. Uh, I think if you're on the Notre Dame side, you're expecting, you know, the new quarterback, Sam Hartman, to come out and really throw the ball around. New offensive coordinator Gerard Parker, he was the OC at West Virginia. Uh, he the, the connection there, by the way, he and Marcus Freeman were on the same staff at Purdue uh, way back then. So, yeah, that's uh, – I'm, I'm curious. I don't, I don't trust Notre Dame's wide receivers yet. Uh, I don't think that Hartman has the same uh, – the same weaponry, I guess we could say, at Notre Dame as he had at Wake Forest. Those Wake Forest wide receivers were incredibly underrated. Uh, I, I think 20 and a half might be a bit too much. Uh, now, obviously, this is not an official play for me, but right, right. You know, if I had to lean one way, I would go Navy because I don't expect this to be super high scoring. The weather is going to play a big part in this because we are expecting rain and some winds over there. It's going to be like 65 degrees in uh, in Ireland. So, yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I think that's where we would start is Navy as the dog here because I, it just feels like too many points for a game that could go slow, especially with the new clock rules, et cetera. Right. I love Gary's insight here. And again, typically we will go on the record with three underdog predictions each, and he and I may actually join in on the same underdog. In this case, with only seven games, I don't know that we're going to get three of them between us. So I, I hear your heavy lean. <laughs> Here's my. Here's my thing with this first year coach against a Notre Dame team that finished the season strong last year. Now, Navy did play them tough for whatever it's worth. A little bit different rosters. Sam Hartman's now the quarterback, the former Wake Forest quarterback, as you as you referenced uh, when he was at Wake Forest last year. He's now the Notre Dame quarterback. So you can't compare everything. But Navy did in the, in the second half of the game. They hung in with Notre Dame. They covered. This is a new coaching staff. This one just screams, and I use this phrase all the time, the two words, stay away. Stay away from Navy. I could totally see Notre Dame being up by 30 points in the second half of this game by piling up points in the second quarter and the third quarter. I know it's a lot of points, but to me, and it's a different continent. They're playing in Ireland. What's the field conditions if it's raining? I'll just stay away to me. You are you are leaning <laughs> Navy. I stay away here. This is a final thought on that. That's I, I, I'm i with you I, for the most part. I'm going to stay away. Uh, but we all know how it is. Guys like me, we want action on these games, <laughs> especially the first one of the season. So, I, you know, once it gets to game time, I'll be sitting there without a bet 
And I'll probably log in and see what I can, uh, what number right. I can find. Maybe live, maybe bet it live if Notre Dame has scored a couple of times. Very it possible. often is the case. Uh, Very so we'll see year two of Marcus Freeman. They did win a bowl game last year. They finished strong until the USC loss. I think they'd won four or five in a row at the end of the year to finish strong. So they open up in Ireland with Navy, national TV uh, on that one on NBC. We'll see what happens from Ireland. Uh, in that one. All right. So uh, where are we going next for underdog number two? Because there's several on the buffet. Do I do I dare see the first ever now that they're elevated to FBS Division one, the first Division one game and a conference game for Jacksonville State? This is not Jacksonville, Florida. This is Jacksonville, Alabama. They've been elevated to Conference USA to play Texas El Paso, the UTEP Miners. Weekend Zero, a conference game, and you are intrigued by this, Gary Seegers, for Three Dog Thursday purposes. I am. The the biggest part of this was the fact that Jacksonville State got Zion Webb, the quarterback, eligible for a seventh season for Rich Rodriguez, right? Of course, everybody knows Rich Rodriguez, West Virginia, uh, Michigan, coached at Arizona. He was the OC at Ole Miss for a little bit, went down to ULM, and then uh, after one season as the offensive coordinator at Louisiana Monroe, he took the Jacksonville State job when it was still an FCS job. So last year was his first year there. They went 9-2, and two, and the numbers on them are pretty awesome. I mean, they what they did last year, compared to those, obviously, to FBS numbers, they were incredibly effective. The man can coach offense. Yes. We yes, know this. He can. The, the, man, the man had Sean King at Tulane, as you know, in the late 90s, lighting oh, yes. it up with an unbeaten season. The man then progressed to West Virginia with what? Pat White, Steve Slayton, and those guys. They oh, could yeah. pile. The man can coach offense. We know this. The problem, Gary, is they're not playing Austin P and Stephen F. Austin and North Alabama and Central Arkansas anymore. They got to move up with the big boys. But why are you sniffing around and why this is an interesting it's a it's a low line in this one, too, at UTEP. It's only a point and a half. There's not a lot of belief in UTEP, at least from the odds makers real quick. And I could I could understand why there's not a lot of uh, so it opened as Jacksonville State a favorite. And it's wow. now uh, it's now sitting at one pretty much everywhere uh, now that I'm looking at the odds. So it's UTEP minus one. Uh, there's not going to be a bigger game at Jacksonville State this season. This is the game, right? The first game against a conference opponent. And UTEP is not great, right? Gavin Hardison, the quarterback, gunslinger, he's awesome, right? It, by awesome, eh, maybe awesome is too strong of a word. He's uh, he's good. He's, he's good. He's a good quarterback. Uh, they've got some weapons, right? They've got that quarterback, uh, the, uh, the running back there. Uh, they've got the wide receiver, Tyron Smith, that came back, uh, had transferred or tried to transfer to Texas A&M. And came back to Utah. Who knows what happened there? But I look at it and and I wonder about their defense. I don't know that they're going to be able to get stops against Jacksonville State, especially in in week one or week zero. I guess the first week where they're going to have JSU Stadium open for an FBS game. I think that I think Jacksonville State's going to be fired up for this one. They got a lot of returning production. This this seems like a big time spot where. You know, I don't really trust UTEP's defensive line. I don't think they can stop the run. And I think that's what you have to do against Jacksonville State, especially with that quarterback, Zion Webb. I, I think this is a big spot for JSU. So I, I'm going to ride with Rich Rodriguez here uh, with the plus one. Uh, the fact that they're getting points here, eh, kind of kind of interesting to me. Again, Jacksonville State and Liberty and New Mexico State all joining Conference USA, who had a bunch of teams abandon that league for the American Athletic Conference. So this is one of the ones that plugs in. First ever FBS game, first ever conference game. You mentioned it, home game. Gary is is taking a strong look at Jacksonville State for Three Dog Thursday purposes. Uh, Again, whether you're seeing us through the Winning Cures Everything platforms, their YouTube, their social, Gary and and I have teamed up for Three Dog Thursday, as well as the audio podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, everywhere for Three Dog Thursday. Thank you for finding us. Just a couple of more moments left and a couple of more games. You, I had to kind of talk you into this one a little bit. It is a large line. It is Hawaii coming some 4,500 miles to the east from Honolulu to Nashville. I looked it up. Original research, Gary. About 4,500 miles, <laughs> depending on where you are on the, on the island of Oahu, to get to Nashville. This game is interesting in that Vanderbilt destroyed Hawaii a year ago in Honolulu in the opener. Return game. 
A lot of people may or may not realize the famous Hawaii quarterback Timmy Chang is the coach. Uh, Chang, by his own admission, said, we're going to need a couple of years to undo the mess of Todd Graham, the recruiting problems, the problems post-COVID-19 with being able to recruit and bring people to Hawaii. It's going to take two or three years before we're credible again. All right, so year two begins in Nashville. Vandy had a couple of wins at the end of last year. They've got some guys returning. Again, we've got a line. What is the line? Like 17, 17 eight, and a half. 17 and a half. Yeah. I don't know what to make of this with Hawaii in Nashville against an SEC team who destroyed them a year ago. Give me a quick thought on this. So here's what makes this interesting, right? It was 63 to 10 last year, just a complete beatdown. And yet there are some really, really sharp guys, right? Some, Some major league betting sharps that are all over Hawaii this week. I mean, all over them. And I cannot understand it now there is something to be said right Hawaii last year started Mike Wright at quarterback this year they're going to start AJ Swan Wright is still on the team uh he ran for 500 yards on like 10 carries last year I mean it was it was absurd he was just blowing by everybody um but their leading rusher Ray Davis uh he left Vanderbilt to transfer to Kentucky he was their thousand yard rusher he averaged like four and a half yards a carry the guy that's behind him uh, Patrick, and I forget the name, but uh, that guy, uh, and I've got the name right here. As a matter of fact, let's see, Patrick. Da, 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 Live da, show, da. research yeah, on the fly. Patrick, we love it. Patrick Smith. There we go. Average less than three yards per carry on only 56 carries. So that's who they expect to be their starter. I, I wonder about this because I think that Vandy just has way too much talent. However, uh, my little preseason formula that I put together. I've got Vandy favored by 14 and a half points. So that's not 17 so and a half. for three dog Thursday purposes, line is maybe a what? little inflated here. Three, a three and bit. a half points. Take it's, a look. I'll tell you this. What I don't like about this for Hawaii, they have to turn around and go back home. As you said, like 4,500 miles, they're going back home for a Friday game against Stanford, wow. which is a big one at home. I wonder how much of this game is we're not so worried about winning. We just want to get in, go through the reps, make sure that we're ready for that home game. Stay healthy and then get back quickly. And typically what they do, you know this, but for the audience, is when they will come to the mainland United States, they will stay, especially early in the year, a couple of games and maybe even three games as opposed to any back and forth. So that's fascinating, as you mentioned on the schedule and that quick of a turnaround. How you seen their schedule? Yes. Yes. Hawaii's schedule is crazy this year. It is so it is constant, just back and forth. It's road game, home game, road game, home game. The only time that they have two games back to back in the same area, either mainland or at home, is week one and week two. That's against Stanford and against Albany. And the whole rest of the year, it's road home, road home, road home, the whole season. So yeah, I, I'm looking I don't know here after the be. Albany game that you're going to Oregon, but then you're coming back home to your point to play New Mexico State. And then you yep. go to Vegas to play UNLV, and you come back home to play San Diego State. So again, the Mountain West Conference doing them no favors about leave them on the mainland to at least play two games in a row, and maybe Hawaii kind of kind of wanted it that way. Again, Timmy Chang was known for throw, throw, throw. He, he kind of instituted some of the four and five wide receiver stuff last year. They just don't have players. They, yeah, they see, are, that's they the are biggest issue got, and so I right? wonder, just one final thought, do, do they hang in, and then for the reasons you just laid out, looking ahead, traveling back home, and Vanderbilt's got better talent, does Vanderbilt bang on them and put two or three touchdowns on the board late third quarter, fourth quarter, to get the cover? That would be my concern for Three Dog Thursday purposes, Gary C. Ag- agreed. Agreed. That That's what I'm worried about. The other part of this is, what Hawaii was best at last year was rushing success rate, right? And their offensive line was really good. They were number 14 in offensive line yards, number 11 in stuff rate allowed. They lost four of their top six offensive line. Wow. And I don't know that the guys that they brought in are as good as as those seniors that they had. That's that's where it gets – oh, and, of course, they lost the running back, Parson, who wasn't – he wasn't, you know, great, but he was dependable. Right. right. So the three words are work in progress for Hawaii. Yes. I just don't know if we're feeling it week zero here at Vandy. And again, Vandy scored 63 points on him a year ago. So yes. 
I don't know. I don't know on the. All right, we're about done for Three Dog Thursday for weekend zero here, week zero. One more game. And you said to me before we hit the record button on the video and for the audio podcast, everybody is on the doggy here. So Gary's using the two words stay away. This just smells wrong to you that everybody is on the Ohio Bobcats against San Diego State in a Mac versus Mountain West matchup a an Ohio team that's off a 10 and 4 season and won a bowl game last year and everybody's on them for three dog Thursday purposes and you're saying hold up hold up wait a second I don't know I, I talked about this on the bet us show yesterday uh it, it feels like everybody is on Ohio and I understand where they're coming from obviously Curtis Rourke the quarterback for the Bobcats is back now uh he is a fantastic quarterback absolutely fantastic however he played in seven games last year. The average, or well, I guess he won seven games last year. He was a uh, seven and three as the starter. In those games that they won, the seven games he won, the average defense he faced was ranked number 100 in PPA per pass allowed. Wow. They were not great pass defenses. San Diego State, I don't expect them to be great, but we know what Kurt Maddox can do on that defensive side of the ball with the Aztecs. San Diego State is at home. I, Ohio has to travel two time zones over. I just I think that this is a spot that you need to be careful with taking the dog on. Uh, it went from four and a half all the way down to two. There's still a lot of people that love Ohio right now. Uh, look, I understand San Diego State, not great on offense, but Ohio's defense is putrid. <laughs> Absolutely putrid. First, uh, and I don't first think use of the better. word putrid on the season goes towards the San Diego State D. I love it. That's uh, well towards the Ohio D. Like oh, the Ohio D. The, I'm sorry. The yes. San Diego yes. State D is. I think they're still going to be good. Well, Even you know Brady they, Hoke. You know guys. Brady Hoke's going to coach defense his second go around uh, oh, there. Yeah. So the Ohio defense is putrid. And again, this this one is uh, is one that you're leery about, even though everybody else is on it uh, for that matchup, which is coming on Saturday night in San Diego. And they got that new facility, second year, right of the uh, yeah. of the on campus facility, uh, Snapdragon Stadium for Pacific Time for Ohio Bobcats, San Diego State. So we didn't really give you official stuff here for Week Zero, but we gave you a lot on four different games and the under out of out of the whole group. The most favorable underdog you think out of the four that we talked about that you're leaning towards State. Jacksonville State at home yeah. with UTEP. Okay, that's and they're only a one point dog, so it's the you're not going to get some huge plus number to sure. take them out, right? Obviously, but uh, but after that, you know, Navy. I don't expect Navy to win, but can they keep it within twenty and a half? Stay away, Navy, TJ says. Stay away. stay away. Rain, <laughs> cold, Notre Dame, better talent. On that one. Listen, you shouldn't stay away from this show. We're going to be here on Thursdays. WinningCuresEverything.com and the Winning Cures platforms, YouTube channel, etc., where you can see the show. Hear the show in audio podcast form at Three Dog Thursday, uh, wherever you get podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. TJ and Gary are going to be here. We may even mix in some guests. It may become like a six-man tag at some oh, yes. point. But for right now, happy weekend zero, everybody, in college football with all that's going to happen. Gary, thank you so much for the friendship, Absolutely. the partnership. I know we're ready. We're, I mean, and next week is an avalanche of games all over the place that we're ready to get into. So this was kind of the warm-up. Like I said, the Caesar what? salad, whatever you prefer here. This was a good warm-up for Weekend Zero. Anything else in closing, my friend? I don't think so. I, I'm looking at some of the numbers, and I'm just I'm not interested in taking San Jose State as a dog. Uh, Florida no. International, I don't have a lot of faith there. Uh, UMass, a <laughs> lot of people Jose are on them. San Jose State in the Coliseum oh. against Caleb Williams, trying to go yeah. back to back for the Heisman. <laughs> Lambs to the slaughter. No, do yes. not stay stay Indeed. away from uh, that. A lot of, lot of people love uh, UMass right now. That line has gone from nine and a half. Have down they to six won and a half. two football games this decade? I don't know that they have. <laughs> Again, the TJ phrase, stay away from UMass right yes, now till you see away. something. Stay away. No, you got uh, the, I, I love New Mexico State. Uh, they're six and a half right now. And, uh, and but again, I'm not betting this one. Pardon uh, me again. They're Conference yeah. USA members now in the conference with UTEP and with the uh, the likes of the other State, programs like Jacksonville yeah. State and Liberty coming in. But you've got other ones like Louisiana Tech, Middle Tennessee. New Mexico State's now a conference member with them. 
Uh, oh, so yes. we'll see what happens uh, with that. Listen, great stuff. Thank you, of Gary course. Seegers. We thank you to the audience. Find everything again at winningcureseverything.com, Winning Cures social channels, YouTube page, a podcast form, search Three Dog Thursday, wherever you get podcasts to hear us each and every week. Viva la underdogs on Three Dog Thursday.